there are many dimensions to givings with their different blessings allocated. I may not have the time to go into all those details, but I want to tell you three kinds of giving that open you up to wealth and abundance. Now, there are many kinds of seeds, first fruits, worship offering, prophet offering, all of them have their allocated blessing. But for the purpose of rising to the wealthy place, there are three of them that I will show you very quickly. I'm not going to explain them much. I will just say them. Ready? Number one, kingdom investment. Kingdom investments. Psalm 122 and verse 9, NIV. Psalm 122 and verse 9, NIV. He says, for the sake of thy house, I desire thy good or I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. Kingdom investments is a powerful. Sorry. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Look up, please. I tie my pursuit for resources as a reflection of my passion to see kingdom come. Kingdom investment. You are so passionate about the house of God, you have made it a responsibility to communicate benevolence, to bring financial resources that meet the needs in the house of God without coercion, not necessarily as a corporate demand as stated by a church. By the grace of God Almighty, and I'm saying it only because I'm teaching this, I have a list of mission agencies I have a list of many things that have to do with the kingdom. And consistently, some of them don't know me. They don't know me from anywhere. We will never meet till Jesus comes. And my kingdom responsibility. Did you know that giving to the house of the Lord is not a favor you are doing God? It's part of the kingdom responsibility. The challenge is most times because of the way we harass men of God. They are afraid to tell you it's so. So you don't think they are, being manip you are, they are manipulating you into providing resources. Non-Christians know this. They practice it. I, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? They know that it is part and parcel of your kingdom responsibility to provide financial resources for kingdom advance. He gave them the gold in Egypt because he would need it for the building of the tabernacle. But Satan quickly made them to build an image with it. Kingdom investments. That you are in this church now. And, and I'm saying it truthfully. You, you discern my heart. And I'm glad I'm the one saying it, not your pastor. So you don't think that you're being manipulated. You can sit down and say, look, I, Lord, show me something that I need to provide in your house. That a month, a quarter, a year should not come without a substantial amount of your giving. Committed with understanding and without coercion for the sake of the Lord's house. I will be responsible for providing these dreams. Let it be a personal commitment. Lord, let it be my kingdom investment. I don't care the committee, just let me know how much. I will do this because I love God sincerely. You can do it out of coercion. You can do it because you want to be known. You have your blessing there and then. That clap is your blessing. The Bible warns against the obsession to do things before men. It didn't say you'll be rewarded. It said whatever they do to you at that point, for knowing what you have done is your reward. Kingdom investment. Number two. I'm talking on giving. I hope you understand the sequence. Do you understand? So the law of giving, and I'm giving you three. Number one is your kingdom investment. Number two, prophet offering. Hmm. This one has brought a lot of problem in the body of Christ. And I submit to you that we men of God have added in no small way to damaging the validity of this because prophet offering means the man of God. And sometimes because that one comes directly to the man, he will manipulate it with an extra passion. You see the passion with which that one is communicated. You will know that this passion is not just a regular desire to teach truth but a manipulative insistence to see that I extract something from your pocket. But just because people have misused this truth, 
does not mean it is not so. Let me tell you the truth. One of the ways that the bowels of a man's grace is open towards you is by discerning and sowing into that grace with understanding. Many of you may wonder why you have not received from your pastor. In all fairness, I'm being truthful to you. It is because you may see him as a pastor, you know, the day you discern that this man is not just my pastor, he's not just a man of God. I have seen the buffet of graces at work in him, and I come with understanding. Sir, I bring this to you as my prophet with understanding. You will be surprised. He may even laugh and say, God bless you. It doesn't matter. Prophets of God. The Bible says, listen to me. It says, he that gives a prophet a cup of water, it doesn't mean a cup of water literally. If you carry a cup of water to a prophet, you are greedy. Are we together? A cup of water is symbolic of any contribution to quenching his thirst. There's no need. The man is going to use the money. So there's no need to be superstitious about what will happen with the money. The prophet offering, look at me. Listen, listen, listen. Can we, in the name of honesty, you remember, I'm working on extra time, five minutes. Don't laugh too much so I'll have the concentration to just finish it. Prophet offering, just because a man of God receives, it doesn't mean it's going to vanish and go anywhere. The prophet offering is your discernment. Whatever he does with that money is none of your business. Yours is to know that you have engaged the Lord that freely... Listen, when it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. Don't come and kneel down in front of me. I'll tell you, go away. Make me venison. And why do I need venison? Because I need delight so that my grace can flow. Listen, not because that there is an atmosphere that allows the release of grace. Make me venison. Let my soul find delight. And in it, I want to swear a blessing upon you. When it was time to go and see Samuel, the challenge they had, Saul and the servants, was that they did not have anything in their hand for the man of God. And the servant said, I have something. I have some shekels. Let's go. And when they met Samuel, he blessed them. And, 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 and Saul's life changed. Prophet's offering has been abused. But it is a, it's a weapon of mass destruction to poverty. When you find a real grace with understanding, I can tell you, any man of God you see that has been genuinely blessed will tell you, some may be honest to open up and tell you, and others, because of our propensity for dishonor, they will quietly shield their stories. But let me tell you sincerely, there will always be a time in a man's spirit. Remember, everyone blesses according to his riches in glory. Praise the Lord. If this man is a billionaire, and he's quickly looking for 1,000 to give somebody begging, and he says, help me, will you give him? You will give him with speed. Because you know that he will not give you back 1,000. This is a billionaire who can change your life. And he said, um, I don't have 1,000. You say, ah, daddy, please. Because when he is giving you, it becomes an insult for him. For his name's sake, he cannot give you back 1,000. Are we together? When you give a man of God money and he gives you back money, he cheated you. When you sow a seed, there must be something that is beyond the three-dimensional realm that is programmed upon your life. I do not teach you error. I teach you the truth of God's word. The last for tonight, let me close my Bible. It's called seed faith. Seed faith is not a word of faith concept. Seed faith is true from scripture. Seed faith is based on the power of resurrection. Please look at me. Let me explain to you. The only thing that did what Jesus did is the seed. That you put a seed in the ground. It dies, yet it comes back to life unassisted. Look at this. 
the life-giving component of every seed is in its death. So when you sow, you are burying the problem you are sowing and resurrecting the solution you need. Listen, let me show you a deep mystery. The Bible says that it is only your seed that is able to carry another body. So I sow grief and I say this pain that I have in my family, I bury it and I resurrect joy, another body. It's a mystery. It's not just sowing. It's not just tying what you want to a seed and sowing it. No. The principle of seed faith works. I want corn. Is that true? And then I take the seed. Frail as it is. Some even have holes there. I sow it in tears. But I don't reap in tears. Because my seed is about to carry another body. And the Bible says there are different kinds of bodies. There are some terrestrial. There are some celestial. I can sow money and reap correct children. Not just a child. A child who is like a nation. A seed brought that child. I can sow money. The reason why money is the most preferred is number one, because of its portability. Two, its usability. And three, it is the greatest reflection of your value and your sacrifice. So I can sow money. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am tired of joblessness. And I've been throwing money just because I saw other people giving. But now I know that anything that is alive and I don't like it, I can kill it by sowing it. When I sow it, I kill that problem. Listen, anything that enters the ground is dead. You can have a problem in your place of work and kill that problem with a seed. This man hates me. He wants to destroy me. He has vowed that I will never rise. Carry that issue. Tie it to a seed. As the seed dies, there is a mystery that kills that problem too. Nobody in my family rises. Carry that pattern. Tie it to a seed. Put it in the air. The same principle of resurrection. And notice, except a corn of wheat dies, it abides alone. So when it resurrects, the other version of what you want comes with multiplication. Many people have not been able to explain the mystery of seed faith. A seed is powerful because it did what Jesus did. Jesus died and rose again, not with the body he died with. When he rose again with that body, there was no blood. He was being sustained by another life. Listen, you can kill any issue by sowing it to the earth. This earth you see is not just a ground. The earth is a mysterious, that is a discussion for another day. Please hear what I'm telling you. Someone vows in his office and says, on over my dead body for you to live. You can pray. You can engage this truth. Carry that issue. Put it on your seed like a tray. Bring it to church. That's why it is dangerous to steal money in church. Because you don't know what someone is trying to bury. Listen. When you catch somebody who is a thief in church, you are, you are not supposed to quarrel the person. You are supposed to find mercy for the person quickly. Because someone is carrying his pattern of divorce every year, bringing it. Someone is carrying jam that he has failed 10 years. And while they are, as you pick it without letting it die, you are carrying it on yourself. Listen, these are spiritual truths. I tell you the truth. 